Hello everyone, and today we'll be going over how to replace these old struts for a Nissan Frontier to these brand new ones. And the items we'll be using for today, we have our strut assembly, we have our jack stands, we have a service jack with also a spare jack to use, we have a 14mm wrench, 17mm wrench, 19mm wrench, a torque wrench, a quarter inch socket wrench with a 14mm socket, 17mm socket, 19, 21, as well as the small 17 and 19 with a half inch socket wrench and extensions and of course a breaker bar this is something you're definitely going to need and we have our thread locking compound we have some grease and we have some penetrating oil so let's get started and for our first step we need to see about wiggling under the vehicle real quick and make sure your vehicle's on level terrain that's very important and we want to mark the lower control arm so grab your paint marker pen and we want to mark where the control arm is, what level it's at. This is going to be useful later on when we torque bolts. So I'm going to put a nice little hefty amount of paint there. That way I can see it when I jack it up later. And before we jack up the vehicle, we need to loosen up all the lug nuts. So go ahead and grab your 21 millimeter lug wrench and go ahead and loosen up all six lug nuts. And now we're ready to lift the vehicle, so go ahead and place your service jack under the vehicle and go ahead and jack it up under the lifting point. And of course safety is a number one priority, so we will always use jack stands when working under our vehicles. And just for an extra level of safety, I pulled the service jack that came with the truck, and that's not going to be taking any of the weight, but it's going to be under the vehicle just in case. And with the truck lifted, we can remove both wheels. So getting the lug nuts off and just keeping them together. And I'm just using the cap as a bucket. And lift the wheel right off. There we go. And we're going to put that aside. Now this step is optional, but I do recommend it. Go ahead and lubricate all the nuts and bolts you're going to be removing. So we're going to use our penetrating oil and go ahead and lubricate every one of those. Now I also did the same step the day before just to help let it work in overnight. Next, grab your service jack, and we're going to go ahead and jack up the control arm just to provide support. And we're going to start with the driver's side. First thing we're going to do is remove that nut right there. We're going to remove the stabilizer bar link. So go ahead and grab your 17mm socket, your 19mm wrench, and go ahead and loosen that nut. And let's see if we can break this loose. And this thing looks like it wasn't taken off ever. Looks like it was on there from the factory. So we're going to go ahead and grab our breaker bar. This is going to come off one way or another. A little bit of finesse here. There we go. And we're going to give it a nice little push. And it looks like we got a little movement out there. So now I can put my socket wrench on there. And there we go. Now we're breaking it loose. And nice finger tight. That came right off. All right looks pretty good let's go ahead and move over to the next nut so then now we need to do the upper nut for that stabilizer bar link and i'm just going to move the camera around so i can get a better angle and give it a little ah okay breaker bar this is going to come off same thing we're going to give it a little bit of pull and try it again with the socket wrench and there we go and this thing is coming off And with both nuts removed, this stabilizer bar link should come right out. And there we go. And we can take a quick look at it. It actually looks like it's in pretty good condition. And we can set that aside. And of course, we need to repeat the same steps in the passenger side. So there goes one nut. And there goes the second one. And the stabilizer bar link should come right out. And make sure you keep these separated. There is a difference between the left and the right. And with the links removed, just go ahead and rotate your stabilizer bar. Just get it out the way. All right, now we're ready to remove our lower mounting bolt. So go ahead and grab your 19 millimeter socket and 19 millimeter wrench. Now this step, I'm gonna go straight for the breaker bar. I'm not even gonna bother with the socket wrench because this is gonna require a lot of strength. So see if we can get one good turn out of it. Ah, there we go, breaking loose. Got that nice squeak to it. And let's give it one more turn just to be on the safe side. There we go, so now I see good movement. And now we can go ahead and take a socket wrench to it and this should come loose.
All right, now we got the nut off. Let's see when we get the bolt out. These usually come out pretty easy, but unfortunately this one's fighting me. So this one, I'm going to have to use a little bit of extra finesse. Now we can take a breather for this step. Let's go and remove the upper mounting nuts. And this only requires a 14 millimeter socket. So go ahead and remove all three nuts. And probably the most satisfying step, we get to remove the old strut assembly. I'm gonna give this one little yank. There we go, and it comes right out. Oh, that's perfect. And just like any replacement part, we want to verify it's the same one. So we have our old and busted, and it looks to be the exact same as our new hotness. So it looks like we're good to go. So before we install the strut assembly, go ahead and grab your grease, and we're going to apply just a little bit to your strut bushing at the bottom of your strut assembly. So right here in this rubber area, we want to apply a nice thin coat of grease. The whole idea is we don't damage the bushing as we're installing it. And now we're ready to install our strut assembly. So go ahead and put it back the exact same way it came out. And as you're fitting everything together, you can always push down the lower control arm just to line up that lower mounting bolt. And of course, if needed, you can also use a screwdriver just to help line it up just a little bit better, just to get the bolt started. Because once it's started, it should push right in very easily. And a little bit of push, there we go. And with the lower mounting bolt providing support, we can install all three upper mounting nuts for this strut assembly. So go ahead and grab some medium strength thread locker, apply it to all three studs, and go ahead and install all three nuts. And make sure they're just snug, do not tighten them up all the way. And we're gonna repeat the same steps for the lowering mounting bolt. So we're gonna grab your medium strength thread locker we're going to apply just a little bit to the threads, like so. You go ahead and install your nut. And the same concept here, we want to go ahead and tighten this nut up, but we want to make it snug, but not tight. And there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our torque wrench. We want to verify the settings at 22 foot-pounds. There we go. And we're going to torque down all three of these nuts on the upper mounting bolts. And for this torque wrench, it's going to beep. And uh, not quite there yet. And there we go. And for this last nut, I couldn't get to it, so I grabbed a 14 millimeter wrench and tightened it down by hand. And now that we torqued down all three of these mounting nuts, go ahead and grab your paint marker pen, and we're going to mark all three of them just to verify they don't move over time. So now we need to perform the exact same steps on the passenger side. So go ahead and replace the passenger side strut assembly the same way we did the driver side.
All right, with both struts replaced, now we can install our stabilizer bar link. So go ahead and install them the exact same way they came off. So you go ahead and grab your thread locking compound and apply a thin coat to our threads. Looks good. And then when installing the nuts, we're just going to go ahead and make them snug. We're not going to tighten them all the way up yet. All right, let's go ahead and rotate our stabilizer bar back to position. Get it back to where it was originally at. And I'm going to move the camera. There we go. And should fit right in. And there we go. And with both links installed, we can torque down the upper nuts. And there's one. And there's two. And repeat the same steps on the lower nuts. And with all four nuts torqued down, we can mark it with our paint marker pen. So remember that mark you made in step one on that lower control arm? Well, now this is where we're going to use it. We got to raise the lower control arm and level it to that mark. This step is very important when torquing down the lower mounting bolt to your strut assembly. And with the lower control arm level, grab your torque wrench, verify it's set to 155 foot pounds, and we're going to torque down this lower mounting bolt, and this is going to require quite a bit of strength. Almost there. And there we go. And of course, we'll mark this one as well. And we'll repeat the same steps on the passenger side. So we're going to jack this one up to the exact same levels we made earlier. Grab your torque wrench with your 19 millimeter socket. And this does require a little bit of finagling to get in there. There we go. 19 millimeter wrench. And we're going to repeat the same steps. And this should be the last mark required. And we're almost done. All we have to do is install our wheels. And you're not going to get all these lug nuts tight. You can just get them snug. So we're going to lower the vehicle down. And with the vehicle on the ground, we can torque down all six lug nuts to 98 foot-pounds. And you want to do this in a star pattern. And probably the most important step, don't forget your lug nut key.